Hello guys, so this Science of Sport video is for BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences, Unit 2 Functional Anatomy, and we're looking at Learning Aim B, the Anatomy of the Cardiovascular System, and this is specifically the last part in this um, topic, uh, B3, the Cardiac Cycle, and I've divided this cardiac cycle section into two videos. This first video, part one, is on diastole and systole, which actually is the cardiac cycle. And the second video that follows, part two, will be on the control of the cardiac cycle. How do we make the heart chambers contract? What nervous system control is there? So your specification for this part says you need to understand and be able to describe the blood flow through the heart and in particular link that blood flow to systole and diastole these two very specific terms that you will need to be able to understand and explain so i'm actually going to jump just a little bit away from the heart and the cardiac cycle and just explore this um, slide to start off with so blood pressure and the reason why i'm connecting blood pressure is because the language that when when we describe the values that we used to measure blood pressure is related to the terminology you've got to understand in terms of your cardiac cycle so look systole diastole blood pressure has a reading or you know two readings actually so this is a very standard typical blood pressure value 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury now firstly you should recognize that units because that was to do with the um, pressure we talked about partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of CO2, millimetres of mercury. Secondly, we've got two values. We've got a higher value and a lower value. The higher value is the systolic reading and the lower value is the diastolic reading. So blood pressure, term we've probably used, you've, you've quite possibly had your blood pressure measured, perhaps in school using one of these SPIG manometers, these blood pressure machines, or maybe at the doctor using a, a cuff like this and they inflate it. And you know that high blood pressure is bad, you know, overly low blood pressure is not great, but you want to be somewhere in the middle there. Okay, so you probably understand a degree of health related appreciation of blood pressure. But when it comes to defining it, you just need to be a bit more specific. So when the heart ventricles contract and eject blood, typically that blood is in relatively high force, high velocity. It's, tr it's been literally pumped out of the, the ventricles and sent into the aorta, the main artery, at great pace. And um, what we would do then is suggest that that arterial blood has relatively high blood pressure. And the reason for that description of it having high blood pressure is because blood pressure is a measure of how much force the blood is exerting on the walls of the blood vessels. So think about it. Blood has just been, you know, whooshed out of the heart. That blood in the aorta will be pushing against the, the aorta's walls quite a lot. Therefore, that push measures as blood pressure. So the more the blood is pushing on the walls of the vessel, the higher the blood pressure. And it makes sense that blood in the veins, which hasn't got that force from the heart, is actually traveling much slower, has a lower blood pressure reading. So first of all, blood pressure is the force that blood exerts on the walls of the blood vessels. And we, we, you know, we couldn't talk about any blood vessels. In this instance, we're talking about arteries. Now, when the heart contracts, in that phase of contraction, the blood pressure in the arteries will be quite high. When the, blood, when the heart is relaxed, however, in between beats, while it's filling, then no blood is being pushed out and the pressure of blood in the vessels will be relatively low. So during the heart actual contraction where the ventricles contract and the blood is being sent out, the blood pressure would be quite high. But then when the heart relaxes and fills again, ready for the next contraction, during that relaxed filling stage, no blood is being ejected, so blood pressure will low. So you can see that therefore blood pressure readings actually fluctuate based on the contraction or relaxation of the heart in each cycle. 
So each heartbeat is a contraction and a relaxation phase. So then just to go back down to these blood pressure numbers, this higher number is the systolic reading. So when the heart contracts, this would be the pressure exerted on the walls of the arteries or the aorta. When the heart was relaxing, this lower pressure value is the diastolic reading, and that's when the heart is relaxing and filling. So just really popping this in here because systolic and diastolic refer to blood pressure readings, the contraction reading and the relaxation reading, but also they totally relate to what the heart does in the cardiac cycle. So let's bring it back to the heart. You will know your heart beats about, textbook says about 72 beats per minute. Uh, yours might be less because you've probably got stronger, healthier hearts, but standard you know, heart rate is 72 beats per minute. Each heart rate beat, if you like, is a relaxation and a contraction phase of the heart. OK, so another name for the heart beat is a cardiac cycle. And the cardiac cycle involves your heart firstly relaxing. And we call that relax and relaxation phase diastole. When diastole is happening, basically your heart fills with blood, your chambers fill with blood. So you need to connect relaxation of the heart chambers, which is called diastole, with the chambers filling with blood. And then we have the contraction phase of the heart, which we call systole or systole. Sometimes this gets called diastole. So this contraction phase involves the heart ejecting the blood from it. So we've got a filling phase, relaxation, and a contraction phase, ejection of blood from the heart vessels. And that's really just summarized over here. And I've just put on this right hand side the blood pressure stuff. So di diastolic, during the diastolic phase of the cardiac cycle, the heart is relaxed and the chambers fill with blood. During the systolic phase of the cardiac cycle, the heart chambers contract to eject the blood. During the diastolic phase, blood pressure in the arteries would be low because there, you know, no blood is being ejected from the heart at all. And during the systolic phase, the contraction phase of the heart, blood pressure in the arteries is higher. That just really connects with the previous slide. So those are the two terms you need to understand and be able to apply to this process of blood flow through the heart, which we're just going to look at in a slightly more broken down way next. You've got to understand what systole and diastole mean in terms of mainly the cardiac cycle, but also how it connects to blood pressure. So let's look at the whole process of the cardiac cycle and look more specifically at what goes on in the heart chambers and the valves and where blood goes and when it goes. So first of all, we have the diastolic phase, the relaxation phase. So that's basically this diagram here. The first thing that happens is blood enters both atria. On the left side, it comes from the uh, from the lung, so this is the pulmonary vein. On the right side, it comes from the body, the systemic circuit, so this is the vena cava. And these two atria chambers fill and fill and fill and fill with blood. Now, while this relax relaxation phase, this diastolic phase is occurring, the AV valves, these atrioventricular valves, are closed because what we don't want is blood going straight through. So these valves are shut initially. And these chambers, these atria, fill and fill and fill, and fill until they get so full that the pressure here is too high and basically pushes those valves open, pushes those valves open. So the blood goes from the right atrium down into the right ventricle and from the left atrium down into the left ventricle. At the moment, so far, there's been absolutely no contraction of any chamber whatsoever. And we call that passive filling of the ventricles. So the ventricles have started to receive some blood, but not because there's been any muscle contraction, but because the pressure has built up in the atria and forced those valves open. It's kind of like burst out and spilt out into the ventricles. So in summary, the diastolic phase of the cardiac cycle is where the atria fill, the atria fill, they build up so much blood and pressure that the AV valves that were shut initially are burst open and the ventricles start to fill with blood passively. Okay, that's the relaxation phase. 
Then we move into the systolic phase, and the systolic phase, which is the contraction phase of the heart, has actually got two parts or two sub phases. The first is this. So picking up from what has just happened, we've got some blood that has started to passively fill the ventricles. To get the remaining amount of blood, the rest of the blood down into the ventricles, the atria actually contract a little bit. So these two top chambers will be made to contract by your heart's pacemaker, the sinoatrial node. And we'll look more closely at that in the second video related to the cardiac cycle. So initially blood passively filled into the ventricles, no contraction whatsoever. And then the atria contract to push, to squeeze these chambers, to push the rest of the blood down into the ventricles. Now, while the ventricles are filling, these semilunar valves, the, the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve are shut initially because, again, we don't want blood just going from the atria straight out the vessels. We want the ventricles to fill first. So while the ventricles are filling, these uh, semilunar valves are shut. When the ventricles become full, and it's then their turn to contract, to eject the blood, the AV valves snap shut. So I'm jumping over to this diagram now. So on this diagram, we had atrial contraction to push the rest of the blood down into the ventricles. The ventricles are now full with blood. These Semilunar valves that were shut now are forced open because the ventricles contracting squeeze this blood and push it upwards into the pulmonary artery to go up to the lungs and importantly into the aorta to go out to the systems, the body systems, the systemic circuit. But also what happens is these AV valves have now been forced shut because what we do not want is blood being pushed back into the atria. We want one way flow through the heart. We want it in there and out there and in there and out there. So really we've got relaxation, the atria fill, uh, the AV valves are shut and the atria gets so full that eventually the AV valves are pushed open and the blood passively goes into the ventricles and then the rest of the blood is pushed down during the start of the systolic phase, the atria contract to push blood into the ventricles. Ventricles then get full. And then we've got the second part of the systolic phase. The ventricles contract. Now they shut these AV valves because we don't want backflow into the atria. And this contraction the pressure forces the semilunar valves open so that the blood can leave the ventricles. And that's the, that's the cardiac cycle. This is constantly happening repeatedly, repeatedly. They fill, spill into there, they contract, push the rest in, they contract, push everything out. Meanwhile, the next, so this is relaxation, contraction, relaxation, contraction. Each one of these cycles is one heartbeat. Okay, and that's the cardiac cycle. Um, there's another diagram here, find one that you understand and be able to explain it. So it shows the filling of blood here, the passing, passive filling of the ventricles, spilling into, pushing those AV valves open. Um, then the, the atrial contraction, pushing the rest of the blood down into the ventricles. Then we've got the AV valve shutting here. And then we've got the semilunar valves being forced open when the ventricles contract. So that shows the whole process again, slightly different diagrams. But that's the basics of the cardiac cycle. And the thing we've got to add to this is what controls these ventricles contracting? How do we make those uh, chambers contract? Just to show you, exam question for four marks, describe the systole phase of the cardiac cycle. Now it wants you does not want you to talk about diastole, so it does not want you to talk about relaxation. It has specified the systole phase or the systolic phase. And when we look at the mark scheme, we know here, and we can see here, as you should know, that the systolic phase is two parts. Firstly, the atria contract and push blood down into the ventricles, and then the ventricles contract and inject blood out of those two vessels into the aorta and the pulmonary. That's wrong, artery. Okay, so 
systolic phase or the systole phase has two parts, atria contract, then ventricles contract. If it asked about diastole, the atria fail in the relaxation phase, but systole is the contraction phase. I've shown you these um, questions before and I've only put them in this section because it talks about the tricuspid valve and the flow of blood through the heart. So what's the function of the valve? Well, it allows blood to go from the atria to the ventricles and prevents backflow. Similarly, same sort of question here, I've popped this here because it talks about the bicuspid valve in particular and you need to understand its role. But the cardiac cycle is about the relaxation and contraction of the heart as is summarised in this video.